We are living on a really nice planet. It's abundant with life. But we have a situation. We people, we like to have an abundant lifestyle as well, which leads to a collision between the two systems, the ecosystem of our planet and our lifestyle, the material way of living. So what we are seeing, we are seeing more and more pollution created by us, being it plastics, being it uh, poisons spilled into the sea, being it fertilizers, being it oil spills, plastics, degradations, microplastics. These are causing severe damages to the ecosystem. And we have to look into it, what is happening? How are the CO2 emissions going on? What's with the climate change? How is water temperature affecting life on Earth? What is with overfishing? What is with the disruptions of the systems? We want to live in a world which is like it was, let's say, two, three hundred years ago. So let's see what we can do to monitor, see, change, and keep it the way that it was. In the past, we started, oh, let's keep it on, so with this beautiful big picture of plastics. So what we did in the, in the past, we, we were doing spot samplings. Why we did that? It was like, you know, you didn't have the equipment, the technology, the possibilities. So you would go out there, take a bottle with you, take a sample of water, and go with this sample of water back into your lab. This system is a little bit limited because you can only do it when the weather is nice, you have to refrigerate your sample, get it back into, into your office or into a lab, and then in your lab you have already <laughs> maybe contaminated your samples. Luckily, technology is going on, so today you are actually taking your labs with you. So while well, the sensors which were previously only available in your laboratories, nowadays you can take almost your whole laboratory with you. And in the future, we will probably be capable of taking the whole laboratories with all possible sensors which you only can imagine to uh, measure whatever parameters you are thinking that that are needed could be done in situ on place. But you would still be limited. The fact that you do it only once a month, if you're lucky, usually you do it only a few times a year at only one spot. So we are moving, looking into long-term monitoring. And the easiest way is you take what we are doing as a spot sampling, you put it on a spot, but this time you do not need anybody to go out there by themselves, take one sample, but you just leave the monitoring platform out there to do this job for you. So you put solar panels on it, you put batteries, so you have the power supply, and then it's only sky is the limit of what of sensors you are going to put up there. You can have the sensors in the water, on the surface only. You can have the sensors down below. The sensors can communicate with you all the time. So you are getting data every 15 minutes, unlike before you had one data point every month or even, even, even worse. But this is stationary again you are in a spot. So with the advances in technology over the last years, we are now moving, as we heard on this conference for many times, to autonomous vehicles or remotely operated vehicles. It started with remotely operated vehicles, but with the technology 
getting better and easier to use, and we are nowadays capable of putting sensors, cameras, uh, sample grabbers onto unmanned vehicles so we can get our data from uh, places where we couldn't even imagine it before. And you don't have to send people in there, so you're not risking divers, but you have a machine that goes where you programmed it, and it takes the data, pops out of the water, or if it has, as we heard, acoustic sense or acoustic communications, it will give you the data directly while you're doing it. And here, again, size, sizes vary. Uh, the bigger, the more you can do, but the more expensive it is. But what I see uh, with this, this is limiting a bit. And we heard already yesterday that money can be an issue. So luckily, the pleasure part of the business is introducing new, new, way, new drones, which are simple, easy to use, and which, we are, which are opening a complete new, new area. Unlike those huge, big things for which you need big ships, now you have a simple device which just flies or swims next to you, dives next to you, takes pictures for you, has data uh, sampling available. Moving from there out of the water, we do not even always need to take new technologies. Sometimes you already have the technologies. You have X-band radars on ships. Usually you use them to detect another ship or to uh, see the coastline where it is in pure visibility. But through software and firmware upgrades, you suddenly can use existing radars for totally different things like detection of wave patterns, heights, uh, surface currents, things like this, oil spills. Combining this with infrared cameras, you are looking into a whole new range of possibilities with already existing equipment, which you have already in installed. Another thing which is going on is that space technology is getting cheaper. Space launch systems uh, are getting down in price as we speak. So while before it was a billion dollar project to send up a weather satellite, nowadays we are talking millions. And the satellites are getting smaller, so it, it, it will be easier to get more of them up there in the air and start looking at our planet. And while maybe in the, in the past we were only able to see temperature, nowadays with advances in technology uh, and uh, precision of the instruments, we can measure uh, the state of uh, sea levels, we can look at, uh, at bio, uh, biomasses, at plastic masses which are, which are accumulating. Uh, I wouldn't wonder that one day we will be able to count the fish in the water out there from the sky. The possibilities are endless and the more satellites are going out there, the more there will be. Another stage thing is we have more and more fixed installations out there in the sea on which, again, a lot of data available uh, is collected. So to return back, in the beginning we had one sample per spot in a month. In the meantime, we can have an abundance of data of all, from all possible or never thought of places like ships, like uh, wind turbines, like uh, oil platforms. And this is all very simple to collect nowadays. A thing of the future is Internet of Things. 
And with the Internet of Things, or IoT, we are getting to this that collaborating will be, will be far easier. Technology will be easier and uh, uh, more available to everyone. And this is one thing which I see in the future maybe as something which was maybe not used enough in the past. And that's all of us, we the people, I would say this, citizen science. Okay, I know the situation is a citizen has his uh, equipment which is not properly calibrated. It's not to a scientific standard, but again, with having many people being there, out there, doing science, and uh, you would wonder, it's not like that people take this lightly. Some invest some serious money into their equipment and would like to cooperate and share their scientific results and findings. But you can do it even simpler. I was just thinking, probably on every pleasure craft nowadays, you have at least a thermometer if not a fish finder already. Most of these crafts nowadays are equipped with internet connections, so data could be streamed from them into the cloud or computers, whatever, databases, and collect it from many, many sources. Just imagine in the Adriatic Sea on the Croatian side, if I'm correct, there's over 20,000 charter yachts waiting every summer to be taken out to sea. Just imagine 20,000 data points which are, collect which are reporting in every 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Which brings us to big data. All of this data is, of course, not really coordinated. It had to be normalized, but nowadays technology is going into that direction that Artificial intelligence can help us a lot normalizing this data, uh, discarding data which is useless, and looking into, into valuable data and help us modeling because it's far better the more data you have to get a good predictive model of what is going to happen than having only one spot sample from the beginning once per month. Although one might say, as a joke, okay, if you have only one data point, it's far easier to create a model than when you have tens of thousands of data points. So the inclusion of citizens could be a, a game changer in acquiring huge amounts of data. But one should not forget uh, that we have fishermen out there all time of year almost. With them, their boats, for them, they already have sensors. They have fish finders, they have temperature sensors. I have been discussing with some current meters, which would be interesting for them. So these boats could as well be included in the data collection suite for the future and giving us even more data. Uh, they could have on their nets cameras installed to, uh, to give us a vision of what is going on down there in life uh, at the moment as the fishing net is dragged behind them. So uh, looking into the future, uh, I might say that technology is getting cheaper, it's getting more available, it's getting uh, simpler to use, it's getting more connected, it's getting autonomous, uh, there is artificial intelligence uh, which will help us uh, deal with all of this data and with all this interconnection and collaboration between uh, us, uh, the people, the scientists, the scientific community, the businesses, the fisheries, the governments, we can all uh, contribute that we get back to the state how our seas were before we started having a great time here with our plastics and material life.